Hey everybody, welcome to an episode of Handle the Heat. I'm your host TK and with me today is actor, dancer, choreographer, as well as the founder of Matrix Men. Please welcome Ungani Ngrobi. Hello, hello. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> welcome to the show. Thank you very much for having me. How are you with spicy food? Um, I'm not with spicy food. How's Romeo on Scandal with spicy food? Um, Romeo doesn't eat any of the food. <laughs> 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 Uh, yeah, they just props. <laughs> well, the name of the show is Handle Heat, so I hope you can handle it. Yeah, and it doesn't smell like this in the studio. There's very strong fumes coming from these things. Yeah. So we're at 4th Avenue, 27 boxes in Marvel, and you're watching Handle the Heat. Working together, we don't raise any suspicions. We're working together on what? On nailing them tunes. I put it online with the usual, have you seen her? Do you know anything about her? And I'll make myself the contact. I need you to plant this somewhere in the office. All right, just in case he decides to, to make a call straight away and... Now, some people don't know how you came up. People don't know that you were first a dancer before an actor. And dance is borderline your first love. Correct. It's like therapeutic, that's your escape. And you want to zone out. Correct. And you, were choreo you, you, you got trained by people like Chris Brown's choreographer in the States. Flash styles, yep. Take that experience. Okay, first of all, um, have wings is <clears throat> it's something. Cool, so um, my, my experience. Um, experience in the States was very, very enlightening. I went there when I was 18 years old, straight out of boarding school. And like I was very... I was very, I guess, fresh, you know, I didn't really do a lot of research into what was going um, about like the culture and stuff like that. So I got to learn that whilst I was there. I, I got to learn a lot about the industry, not just about like dancing, um, but about acting, about a whole bunch of, of stuff just within the entertainment industry. Yeah. And it was all like um, jam packed, like it was just being absorbed so quickly that I had to get comfortable and used to it so that I could be able to find a way to make it like make things work for myself yeah. so like cycling to an audition for an hour and a half that was a normal thing that was not a ah I need to do this no yeah. that was a normal thing so things like that um, doing a work study program at a dance studio so that I can work at the studio to maybe hopefully one day meet someone whether it's yeah. like a big choreographer or something but in exchange for free dance classes so I was like a cafe barista at one point I was a janitor at one point of the studio where I would clean the studio floors the mirrors they had a dance company so I'd wash the, the dancers clothes their towels when they'd come back from performances all just to be able to take a jazz class or a ballet class because yeah. those classes were like twenty dollars a class and that's a lot that people don't know Exactly. They don't know the struggle. Exactly. Um, but you, in order to do those things, like you have to just like put your pride aside or your ego, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Um, because I mean, I didn't grow up in a family where um, I thought one day my job will be to be a janitor, if that makes sense. You know. So we were well off when I was growing up. So to humble myself and be like, okay, yeah, I'll, I'll do other people's laundry. I'll, I'll be the bus boy. You, you want coffee? Cool. Yeah, coming up. You know. Um, that that was me and um, I appreciate the fact that I got to that point because now when I look back in retrospect I'm just like yeah no it, it makes sense. So would you say you've served your time or you're still serving your time? Oh you yeah, yeah, your yeah. yeah I'm, I'm still serving my time. <laughs> Best believe that. <laughs> So being from the streets of Nile Spray and seeing um, actors, so the series, we did it become a dream to be in the entertainment industry and make something of it. Or did that find you by accident? So yeah, it completely found me by accident, or I guess it wasn't by accident. Um, I was never, growing up, I wasn't like, oh, I want to be an actor, or I want to be that person on the TV screen. Um, I actually just wanted to be like my dad in a sense, um, work for the family business because everything was going great and it looked amazing and stuff like that. So I was actually going to do civil engineering or something to do with construction. So that I could be able to... Yo! Ah uh, guys, I'm terrible with hot stuff. So that I could be able to um, take over the family business at some point. Um, and then 2011, April 16, I made Charlton Forbes. Um, you guys probably know him. Um, 
and yeah, he introduced me to how I could make dancing a career choice um, because when I met him, I was very active in my dancing. Yeah. I was part of the hip hop club at my high school and I was the head of the club and stuff like that. So when we had open days at school, I'd be the one that would do like the performance for like the drama section and yeah. all that kind of stuff. So yeah. when I met him, I was like, okay, cool. This is interesting, um, especially because um, I was bullied in school, so like I used dancing as like an escape goat for, for expressing those um, emotions. Okay, one bite is enough, I think, yeah. One bite is complete. As long as you taste it, the sauce is like chili. <clears throat> I'll even lick my fingers. You doing alright? Yeah, how are you doing? I'm good, I'm good. You sure? Yeah. I feel like you have a great poker face. <laughs> You've been doing this long enough. Uh, practice doesn't make perfect. You can never get used to this. I don't know. Damn, I need my handkerchief. I'm sweating. <clears throat> okay, cool. So yeah. So, being a dancer, you probably spend a lot of time on YouTube watching the great Americans from Keona Mori to Wildebeest, who you got, who you got trained by as well. Um, I mean, the list goes on. Brian Papoose. Who's the person that you like look up to and go, this man does it for you? Ian Eastwood. Ian Eastwood? Yeah. Ian Eastwood is... Ah, oh, man. Ian Eastwood, he's, he's phenomenal. Um, he's forever growing. Um, he's forever challenging himself. And he doesn't, according to my um, view, doesn't like conform to the norms of the industry. He's always trying to break boundaries, create something new, create something different. And he's so like real. So like, he just, like uh, does this stuff just generate like a lot of saliva in your mouth? Like I just don't <laughs> understand. So like the, the few times that I took his class, it wasn't just about coming and learning steps one and two and three and four. Amongst that, He's busy like teaching us about the industry and telling us things that we need to know, things we need to research, places where we can go for this and that. And that for me was just like such a massive eye opener because at that time, the other teachers I was going to weren't necessarily doing that. Yeah. Um, but not even just that, just like his style is so unique. Yeah. Like if anyone just watches him, there's there is no other Ian Eastwood. Yeah. And it's not, it's not like I'm not, blowing his horn or anything like that. I just honestly, if there's someone that I would like, love, love, love to work with, collaborate with, um, get to come and teach at my studio here, it would be him. Yeah. yeah. And speaking of studios, you own a studio called Sands Group. What's the purpose and function of this organization? So Sands Group is an artist development studio. So we teach acting and we teach dancing. Um, so the dancing, as of right now, it's basically open classes. We don't have like a month program or something like that. The acting, yeah, oh, the Sriracha fam. The acting, um, we do three month um, courses and we also do private lessons. We also do private lessons for dancing. So with the acting, it's a lot more um, theory and practical based um, and also just to give people knowledge about the industry that they necessarily don't get either at like a varsity or just um, around anywhere because like I used to get quite a lot of um, messages from people who have graduated from places, universities even, um, colleges and they're like how do I get into the industry, what do I need to do and I found that so confusing because you study for like three years or four years those that had honours and stuff like that but it's two years after you graduated and you still don't know how to maneuver yourself in the industry. Yeah. So I just thought um, I'd be a helping hand in that sense. Um, and um, yeah, that's, that's, basically, that's basically what Sanskrit is about. This one takes quite some time. It's like it's on the highway, yeah, just like right. cruising. And then right now it just took a short left off ramp to Malville. What what avenue is this? Fourth. Fourth Avenue 27 Bob. <clears throat> yeah, nah. 
can't yo handle <laughs> the heat. You good now? It's kind of hot. Um, not this in here, so I'm sweating from the heat that's in the <laughs> building. You know, they're crying or uh, yeah. No, I'm good. I'm good. <clears throat> So there's a lot of interest in our South African or African film, Last King of Scotland, King of Queen of Kadwe. So it's started there. But, I mean, the list goes on. What movie right now in Africa would you say is killing? Like this is amazing, but what what do you have to do? So, woo my tongue is dying. <clears throat> we have three more. That's impossible. I okay. What would I put on the good list? Um, I don't know if this is the full name. I think I might forget. But I think it is a full name. Ellen. It's about... Um, um, this is terrible. Um, it's about a, a mother who's dealing with um, her child who is a drug, drug addict. South African story. Um, I think it's I think it's great. Like saliva just keeps building up. It's insane. Um, and a thumbs down, I would say maybe um, um, Mr. Is it Mr. Right Guy? Miss, Mrs. Right? Mr. Right Guy? Or is it? It's a rom com. Um, I didn't necessarily enjoy it. Um, there were. According to my understanding, bear in mind this is my opinion, this is my opinion, it's not a fact. Um, I think it was about trying to show that in Johannesburg or in South Africa, we can also like love one another. And I just felt like, it's not, it's not executed in an authentically South African way. I think it was borderlining with the Western kind of rom-com structure, which is okay, like if, if that's the inspiration that they got. But I just feel like as, as South Africans, like there is so much more than just trying to say we can love one another that in a sense of like storytelling. Love is everywhere. Like, like we live because of love, you know? So a homeless person, they just want to be noticed because that's almost like a transaction of love because I'm being seen. Yeah. It's not even a thing of, I need you to give me money, but like most of the time, I don't even give these guys money. I just talk to them at the traffic light because they just want to be seen. Because how many times do you just chill there and you're like this? But this person is here and they doing whatever gestures, but you just like this, you know? So I just feel, and like for me, that's a South African love story right there. The way we care about um, the homeless people or the way we don't care about them. That's a story that hasn't been told. You get what I mean? So I just feel like, yes, we want to maybe try and attract the global um, market, but let's be authentic and be true to ourselves because that's the only way possible because that's how they will want to be invested in learning more about us because we're teaching them things that they don't know about us, you know. Um, and also just like squashing stereotypes about South Africa or about Africa, as in, like in general, like there's so many things, like living in the States, trust, like people believed that, I didn't expect that, <clears throat> people believed that I grew up with a pet elephant and we let it go because it became too big for the yard. House, way, right? like really, we have Google, we have internet, like how do you still believe that? I got asked by this one girl that um, I was interning with, did you buy your iPhone in the States or in South Africa? Why? Because we don't have mm. cell phones in South Africa? Like, she asked me, where did I learn how to speak English? What, what do you even mean? You know, and then we go and make movies and it's probably ironic because I'm speaking English right now, but then we go and make movies where our black people or even our colored people or even our white people are all speaking English. Yeah. There's subtitles for that. 
let's be true to ourselves. Right now, I don't know if we, because we didn't have this conversation, but I don't know if you understand Zonga. If I could, I'd speak Zonga the whole time. You get what I mean? Yeah. But because Zonga is, I guess, not a predominantly um, popular language, so to speak, yeah. when you speak Zonga to other people, they'll either speak Zulu to you or speak a, another language. Yeah. And because for some reason, Zonga people and vendor people, um, we're very accommodating. So we'll learn other people's languages. We'll come, we'll speak Zulu, we'll speak Tana, we'll speak Pedi, we'll speak. But we never like just force down our language down people's throats. You know, and that's that's another story right there. Like there's so many stories that are authentic to South Africa that can be told, and I just feel like hence referencing to Black Panther. Yes, the the like yes, it's great and um, love the, the the choreography and all that kind of stuff. But then, how, how was the cousin? But then we want to let it slide because oh no, it's American actors and they tried. No, it's not about that. How true is is would it sound and be? Why didn't they just create their own language? Because yeah. they could have done that and no one would have judged. But now you want to come here show us this thing, we must be happy. You're using a language that's one of our official languages and it's not being used the proper way. It's like me now being like, yo, what's happening, man? You know what it is, man, nah, I mean it. They're not gonna like that. So why are we trying to get them to like our stuff? Sorry to the chef that I'm not eating the whole chicken piece. But the wings are great though. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I'm not licking this one off my fingers, no ways. Oh my shattered nerves. You can just wait. There. Thanks. My morals are completely off right now. Can you name some of the movies and characters where you've watched and you're like, I could have killed this role. If you gave it to me, local or international, doesn't matter. You like watch the role, watch the scene, you're like, give that role to me, I'll show you what I can do. Um, <clears throat> um so No, this is terrible. You're doing well though, it's last two. I don't think I'll survive. <clears throat> I auditioned for a Netflix show um, whilst I was still in the States. And um, whilst I was auditioning, oh my. when I was done, they were happy with my performance. But they said something that completely like, just like weirded me out. Um, which was, thank you so much, Rani. Um, I feel like my tongue is swelling up. So thank you so much, Rani. Um, we're just waiting for Jaden Smith to arrive, and then we'll let you know. So I don't know if you know, but there's a show on Netflix that Jaden Smith is on um, with the Afro. Yeah, I feel like I would have killed that. So, yeah, and I'm not going to mention the name of the show, so, haha. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that's just one of them. Um, I don't necessarily like to watch stuff and be like, hmm, I could have killed that. I like to watch and say, hmm, how could I have added to that? Um, and, like, one show I would have loved to have a hand in is definitely, um, it's too easy. Um, definitely would have loved to have some form of a, a hand there. Um, I think I would have, not even I think, I know I would have loved to also have a hand in like um, Empty Sugar Down South. Um, yeah, so I, I look with the, because I feel like people get the role that they, they deem to get. So I feel like I just look to say, okay, cool, maybe that character could have had a friend or a brother. Or a, and I could have been that person to help elevate whatever story. Like. Yeah. So yeah, almost like a positive outlook, unlike these days. Yes. Ways. Uh, handle the heat. It's a good name. Thank you. It's a very good name.
You ready for the last two? Mm -mm. Don't you have another question? <laughs> With you being in a relationship, in public, do you miss being back in the private life? Every day. Every single day. Um, yeah, sorry, was that, was that the end of the question? Mm. Yeah, every day. Um, because there's just certain things that you can't do anymore. Um, like, wake up, not shower, and go to the shop in your sweats that you wore yesterday and there's maybe some sauce on them and um, you just want to go buy some bread and milk because the minute you get to the till there might be a situation where you're like oh yeah and you don't want to be in that position where you either come across as rude because you realize well i'm not in the position to be taking a picture right now because i look ashy i've got you know and all mm -hmm. that kind of stuff so but also aside from that, just like um, people have an opinion for your life in a sense. Like for those who don't know, I'm in a relationship which is public and you can see that on my social media at Mugani Global everywhere. Um, and there's so many people that comment and say, oh, you should put a ring on it. Oh, you should tie the knot. Uh, uh, uh. And um, it gets to a point where people then start saying, how, Kanti, when are you going to tie the knot? Kanti, when are you going to? And then for those people who see social media as a whatever kind of platform, it might come across as if I don't love my partner, you know, because I've heard quite a few times where other guys and also girls say, if you really love her or if you really love him, tie the knot. You know, so it's, it's all these kind of things where you just like um, people just like bombard you with, with their own opinions and mm. expect you to just take. Mm. And the minute you kind of like reject whatever it is, then it's like, um, then it's like um, you're not a nice person or you're kind of whatever. Yeah. Um, but aside from that, I mean, like that's not the only thing. It's just like having your private life is, is cool because you can do things and not feel. You don't have to double guess, like, should we, should we not, mm, what if this happens, or what if, like, you can never just leave the house, you have to think about it, which is the strangest thing for me, like, even the other day, <coughs> in fact, it's not the other day, on my way here, um, at the traffic light, um, I let this guy cross and it was open for both of us. Um, I don't know, sometimes drivers go before pedestrians, that's not cool. Um, so I let him cross. But as he crossed, then he looked to like, give me a thumbs up and then he recognized me. And then he started like wanting me to stop. And um, it just hit me again. Like sometimes I forget that, oh, you're this um, celebrity, so to speak. And I, I don't even like to call myself a celebrity because I, I didn't get into the industry for this. I just got it. I got in because when I got in through dancing into the acting and stuff, I really loved it. Mm. And now it gets clouded with social media and all these things. And now you go to auditions and it's it's about social media. Like it, it just gets clouded with too much stuff, you know. And I wish that we could be able to to put that aside. And of course, the day is coming when social media is going to die, unfortunately. So. Um, those are things that I'm just like, ah, I wish we could do without. So before we wrap up and go into your busy day of shooting and auditioning and basically being the on-screen guy. Yeah. So, one, do you kind of feel you're at a place where you are forced to be the icon that says, that stands for men, aren't, for men not being trash? And then secondly, um, can you talk about your NGO, Matrix Men? Doing good, guys. I'm just acting. <laughs> I'm not a method actor, so don't be fooled. I'm assuming it's still on the highway. Has it not kicked in yet? No. Okay. 
Did you just like swallow it whole or something? No, I chewed. Wow. Is it supposed to have kicked in? I'm worried. Immediately. Now. Okay, well, let me answer your questions um, before it kicks in. I feel like the more I breathe, the more it gets worse. That's why you keep quiet. That's why you're <laughs> good at this, because you ask the question and then you're done. You see, now it's starting. Ah! Okay, so, did you say something about men are trash? Yeah. Um, are you forced, do you feel like you're forced to be? No, I don't feel like I'm forced to be the naysayer of men are not trash or however. Oh, this is bad. Um, my thing is, okay, let me just give you guys some, some, some background. So the NGO, Matrix Men. So in the intro, um, said I'm the founder. So I'm not the founder, I'm just the director. I'm the founder is Martin Powders. Um, <clears throat> okay, maybe I should calm down. I think that your tactic works better. So, <clears throat> as a director of Matrix Men, we support and counsel male survivors of abuse. And um, when this men are trash thing started, my biggest question was. My biggest question was, how does it help? How does this hashtag help? Aside from people starting to just bash people um, and also just um, stereotype a whole bunch of stuff, how does it really help? And then I looked at South African research where research states that 44% of South African boys, by the time that they're 18 years old, have experienced unwanted sexual conduct. That's 44% of our men in this country. Then just like give some leeway for those who didn't feel confident enough to take yes on the survey, which was anonymous, which was done throughout 13,291 kids. Um, throughout all nine provinces. <coughs> if you guys want that information and the research, please hit me up, I can give you the links. This is not just uh, made up stuff. So, when I read that, I was just like, huh, it's funny that 44% of boys by the time that they're 18 have experienced unwanted sexual conduct, yet how many places are there for boys to go to for counseling, for support? Yeah. I can name you dozens for women, not to say that they shouldn't be there, but what's happening is that these kind of things like abuse, it's becoming a gender thing, where else it's an abuse thing, there's a victim and there's a perpetrator, mm. and that's what we should be talking about, it shouldn't be about um, gender. <coughs> you doing what? This is abusive. That's what this is. Um, it shouldn't be about the different genders because then what happens is then we, we then separate because it's like, okay, where are the good guys that say that they're not trash? What are they doing to help us? Then I just reverse that. I survived a domestic violence relationship. I was in public on the streets when my girlfriend at that time um, was hitting me. There was a family, husband and wife and their two kids, just parked their car, still in the States. Um, and you know like how they have these residential areas where there's no like fences and gates and you just literally walk up to the door. So they, they're going in and out of their house getting groceries from the car. In the meantime, my partner at that time is grabbing me, ripping my shirts, hitting me, doing all these things. 
I kid you not, we've seen this on social media experience, um, experiments where the girl is hitting the guy and they're like, oh, he probably cheated or he must have done what. As soon as the guy is hitting the girl, it becomes a whole thing where people just like flock over and they want, then they even start beating up the guy. Why is it like that? You get what I mean? So my thing is just like, hashtag men are trash, it doesn't help solve the problem. What we should be looking at is, why are they doing these things? Going back to research, males are four times more likely to perpetrate what happened to them to someone else. And because most of the time they want to find someone who's weaker than them, they will result to a woman. Yeah. But same thing happens to young boys with an older man. Why? Because the boy is weaker. So this thing is really not a gender thing. It's a victim and perpetrator. And the minute we can see that and we can help these 44% who we then expect to grow up in a society where it's be strong, be tough, don't cry, don't, 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 don't be a man, don't be a that thing. You get what I mean? So that's my biggest thing because I'm just like, if we really want to build a better society, we have to work together, male and female, to fix this. It's not a one street where now, however it's been envisioned, should happen. You know, so that's my thing. I don't feel like I'm, I'm the forefront of, of it because I don't talk about it that much. Um, um, like, I do post about the NGO and stuff, Matrix Men, and if there are guys out there um, that do need support in any way, whether you went through a terrible divorce, um, whether you, you girlfriend hits you or throws things at you. I had a laptop thrown at me. Yet I must, because of society, keep quiet and not deal with that. Or if I'm a guy and I cry, I'm too sensitive or like no. Or then you get girls who say, and this is not all girls, don't get me wrong. You get girls who say, no, I want a guy who's in touch with his feelings, but not too much. But it's either I wash the dishes or I don't wash the dishes. There's no middle ground. You get what I mean? So if I'm gonna be sensitive, you can ask Stephanie. Much I cry. Like I'm super sensitive and I love that about myself because I'm in touch with my feelings and I'm able to get things off my chest. But because other guys or other men or other boys conform to society, they hold these things in. And the day the bottle is too full, mm -mm, let's use this one. The day the bottle is too full, then it's a snot club. Because it's really not about male and female. We're all humans, we all cut, if not all cut, we all bleed if we get cut, right? We all hurt inside. God did not create, whether you believe in God or not, fam, Jesus Christ is real, and God did not create tears for us males to not use them. So yeah, um, that's, that's how I feel about that. Um, I could go on and on for days about it. Um, I'm very passionate about it. And um, yeah, I'm currently, um, we're shooting a film. Um, it's called Hex. Her paintings. Um, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a cool one. I haven't done something like this before. It's a horror movie. Um, and um, yeah, my role is not that big, um, but I, I enjoy it. Um, it's really not about having a big role at the end of the day. Whatever role that you have, you have to um, deliver your best in a sense because um, the ship won't work if. There's no cleaners. If there's no captain, if there's, we all have a specific role to fulfill. Yeah. Um, and um, yeah, also definitely working hard on Sanskrit this year. Um, I'm starting my own foundation called Running Global Foundation, um, and we're launching this year, April, Good Friday. And um, yeah, that's that. That's basically me. Um, you can catch me on social media at Running Global everywhere. Sans Group, it's at Sans Group everywhere, S A N S G R O U P. Matrix Men is like Matrix, like woo, the Matrix, uh, Matrix Men. Um, that's also everywhere on social media. Um, and that's strictly for, for guys. Um, but we are running a campaign just so that people don't think that we don't care about um, females or women or girls. Um, we, all, we also are running a campaign called RSA, meaning South Africa obviously says no more. And it's a, it's a US-based campaign, which we have been given the, the privilege to be the South African runners of this campaign. And it's a, um, a no more domestic violence and sexual abuse campaign. And it's for both male and female. 
just to emphasize the fact that this is not a gender thing, it's an abuse thing which has a victim and a perpetrator.